Hey guys, welcome to IGCSE Study Buddy, where you can revise chemistry topics from the Cambridge IGCSE syllabus. If you are enjoying our videos so far, please don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel. In this video, you are going to learn part 3 of chapter 7, Acids, Bases and Salts. The methods we learned in the previous video explained how to make salts that are soluble in water. Now let's see how to prepare insoluble salts which requires a different technique. To prepare insoluble salts, we use a process called precipitation. This involves mixing two soluble salts in solution which react to form an insoluble salt that precipitates out of the solution. First, separately dissolve known amounts of the two soluble salts in distilled water in separate beakers. Mix the two solutions together. The insoluble salt will precipitate out of the solution as a solid. Filter the mixture to separate the solid insoluble salt, that is the precipitate, from the liquid solution, that is the filtrate. Wash the precipitate with distilled water to remove any remaining soluble impurities. Dry the purified precipitate in an oven. For example, if you want to make barium sulfate, which is an insoluble salt, you can mix solutions of barium chloride and sodium sulfate. In this reaction, barium chloride reacts with sodium sulfate to produce barium sulfate and sodium chloride. After the reaction, the barium sulfate precipitates out of the solution as a solid, that is, an insoluble salt. Any remaining sodium chloride stays dissolved in the solution. The barium sulfate is filtered out. To purify the barium sulfate further, it is typically washed with distilled water to remove any remaining soluble impurities. Finally, the purified barium sulfate is dried in an oven to obtain the solid salt. Now let's learn the general solubility rules for salts. All sodium potassium and ammonium salts are soluble. All nitrates are soluble. Chlorides are soluble except for lead chloride and silver chloride. Sulfates are soluble except barium sulfate, calcium sulfate and lead sulfate. Sodium Potassium and ammonium carbonates are soluble, but all other carbonates are insoluble. Sodium, potassium and ammonium hydroxides are soluble. Calcium hydroxide is partially soluble, but all other hydroxides are insoluble. Finally, let's discuss hydrated and anhydrous substances. An anhydrous substance is a substance containing no water. Some salts like sodium chloride form crystals without water when they crystallize. However, many salts absorb water molecules and become hydrated during their crystallization from solution. This means that when salts are made, water can be trapped inside their crystals. A hydrated substance is a substance that is chemically combined with water. Example, hydrated copper 2 sulfate. 
this water in the hydrated substance is referred to as water of crystallization. So, water of crystallization is the water molecules present in hydrated crystals. Examples include hydrated copper 2 sulfate and hydrated cobalt 2 chloride. Both compounds contain water of crystallization. As you can see, when writing the formula of hydrated substances, we separate the chemical formula of the salt from the water molecules with a dot. This water is not simply physically trapped, but is part of the chemical structure of the crystal. When you heat hydrated salt, like hydrated copper 2 sulfate, it turns into anhydrous salt, that is, copper 2 sulfate, and releases water. This change can go back and forth, so it is a reversible reaction. That concludes Chapter 7, Acids, Bases and Salts. Are you enjoying our videos? Are they helping you? Here's a way you can show your appreciation and support our continued efforts. You may use YouTube Super Thanks to send us thanks. Hope this video helped you. Please share your thoughts in the comments section. Be sure to check out our other videos from our playlists. Thank you for watching and please don't forget to subscribe to IGCSE Study Buddy for more revision videos. Bye!